the World Series of Poker main event is back. For the last year, welcome to the Rio All Suite Hotel and Casino in the 2021 World Series of Poker main event. This is day 1A. As you look inside the Amazon room, Lon McCarron with Norman Chad and Jamie Kerstetter, the first of six opening days of this main event. And we've got a star-studded field out there already. Billy Baxter, seven-time bracelet winner. Yeah, six of them in low ball draw. The other one is in Raz. He's my type of 80-something legend. Great to have Billy in the field. Plays a lot of other games, too. Also, Alex Livingston in the house. Third place in the 2019 main event. Won four million bucks, Jamie. Amazingly, 13th in 2013. And he has an amazing Bernadoodle named Jerry Big Paws. Oh, the pizza parlor out there in Canada as well. And the man, the godfather of poker at our featured table. How about that, Doyle Brunson, Norman? Yeah, 88-year-old Las Vegas longtime rec player. Played the seniors a couple of weeks ago, donked his chips off in about 15 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Sitting also at a featured table along with uh, Doyle Brunson, we'll see J.J. Liu, but uh, Perry Friedman is also here, a uh, one-time uh, bracelet winner. As we look at Doyle, of course, uh, twice won the main event, back-to-back -back in 76, 77. Uh, had a great run to start his whole World Series career, and he kicked it off. And, and there is Perry, a uh, good player and quite a character. Quite a character. Uh, Won his bracelet in 02 in Omaha 8. In his spare time, he, he tries to make the world better. That kind of worries me. <laughs> uh, but he has done that. A very smart man. Good to see Perry back in the fold. The World Series as well. We have three featured tables for you. There's our main table. Table one, table two. And uh, over here, uh, a look. Uh, we'll get to see Jason Kuhn out there. Jason, finally, Jamie broke through and won his bracelet this year. Amazing. It was long overdue. Uh, he's a new GG ambassador, and he and his wife, Bianca, just welcomed son, Calum, in September. So, Jason Kuhn, uh, one of the good guys in poker, uh, a long history of uh, where he's been from the East Coast and worked his way through the poker world. Uh, and I just... Marvel the guns he brings to <laughs> the man of it every year. You heard of his prop bet recently? No, what is he that? has a prop bet to run a hundred meter dash in less than eleven seconds at age thirty-six. Ooh, is Huxley involved? <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? Anyway, everyone uh, is Hello, excited everyone. as Jamie alluded to earlier about uh, this main event and getting it back Hello, underway everyone. after eight hundred forty-one days Thank without you. Uh, a really solid main event. Of course, we had the hybrid online and we had the uh, live action happening in Europe, happening in the U.S. Uh, Damian Salas, of course, winning that. Damian in the field as well. Uh, and there's J.J. Liu. Uh, and you, you walk down the poker memory path looking at their Hinden Mob and World Series history, but of course, uh, Doyle and J.J. Liu. Yeah, J.J. Liu, member of the Women in Poker Hall of Fame, 2012 inductee. And I happen to be standing by this table out in the field before we were on the air when uh, one of our people came over and said, all right, don't take a break. You guys are going to be on the TV feature table. And uh, you can imagine the reaction. It was it was quite thrilling uh, for most of them. Of course, JJ and Doyle and Perry have been here. As we take a look at the tournament summary brought to you by Solve for Why. Damien Salas in the field defending his title. Uh, they added an extra starting day to accommodate the international players. And uh, we'll be here for 14 straight days, us and other announcers. We're going to bring you the 50K final table tomorrow. And then the final table for the main event, November 16th and 17th. As we get underway here. Uh, and they have been playing. We played uh, two levels of action already. They started at 11 o'clock. Uh, local time, 60,000 in starting chips. And... Uh, I, I don't, I'm sure there's been a few eliminations. I've been seeing short stacks out there. I've been seeing and them on Twitter, and yeah. I feel their pain because everyone else all week's going to say, hey, what day are you going to play? Which day one? And they're mm -hmm. already out. Brutal. Yeah, so uh, the day one jitters probably have subsided. They are playing two-hour levels, and so uh, they're four-plus hours into play. JJ flops uh, bottom pair. 
the ace jack. And she is so fun to watch, so fun to talk to. She's toned down uh, the wardrobe a little bit. You and I and Jen Tilly did the ladies' championship, and uh, she was bringing the gold and the earrings and everything. That was fun to watch. I was going to say, she's almost incognito right now with nothing too shiny. Yeah, <laughs> fresh uh, hotel owner. Uh, she's enjoying the life <laughs> down everything. in the Bristol, Tennessee <laughs> area down there with a new hotel. So uh, JJ, always a bright light at the table. And to have three, like no you know, really well-known names, oh, Norman, yeah. at a feature table to start the day, uh, it's kind of fun. I mean, they know each other, and people who watch know them as well. It is. It's also a product that uh, Day 1A, always the lightest attended of the uh, starting days. We have two extra starting days today. So with a smaller field, sometimes you get lucky, and you get Doyle, Perry Friedman, and J.J. Lou together. Already heard some bad beat stories also walking through here in the first well, couple of hours. Uh, also, the field, and uh, you and I both stopped by uh, normally someone who deals the main event final table, Norman Heather Alcorn, and uh, she had eaten the lucky starburst you gave her and had lost all of her 5K chips. Okay, she's not, uh, oh. she's the only recipient of the lucky starburst today on the short field. You're not supposed to eat it. Oh, I don't want, I don't I didn't want know you, that. I don't want you to trigger Jamie Kerstetter that she, she kind of got an unlucky color. <laughs> what uh, color did you give her? She, no, she picked out red. Okay. She okay. Did. Yeah. I bag mine up every day. That's what you're supposed yeah. to do. I can't believe she would have <laughs> ate it. And then by the end, I'm not well, eating she, it she because it's been in a bag of yeah. dirty chips. <laughs> she's not playing too much, you know. She should be dealing. Uh, she's got a dealer school in the Ozarks. And, uh, she told me the other day, she says, I'm playing. I'm playing day one in case I make it and in case I get knocked out. I'm just going to go home either way for a, a little while. The Forbes, <laughs> so with Pocket Kings on day one, nice. Oh, yeah. Imagine if you walk into players, the main right? event and it's your first <laughs> time and you are seated with Doyle Brunson. I mean, what's the chance of that at this point? And Doyle hasn't played the main event for several years. And, you know, when you play with Doyle, if you're lucky enough to play with Doyle, you, you don't know whether you want to get into pots with him or just stare um, at the legend. Oh, I mean, oh, he's, he's the living legend right there, the godfather of poker in the flesh playing with you at the main event. He, How good can it get? He's not part of Mount Rushmore in poker. He is Mount Rushmore of poker. What was it like? Because you played with him most of the day a few years ago in one of the mixed games, stuff like that. And, and you you don't stop talking about it. It's that kind of experience, right? Yeah, it was, I got so lucky to play uh, all of day one in a stud eight event. And I've told the story before, but one, at one of the breaks, he came up to me and he said, Chad, you uh, Chad, you actually play a little better than I thought, <laughs> which just thrilled me. And they said, you know, if you just plug two or three leaks, you might have something going. And then I, I saw him a few days later when he was about to start main, a main event day one. He was in early. And I walked up to him. I said, Doyle, you mentioned the other day that, you know, I got two or three leaks. I should plug up. Like, what? He said, oh, you'll have to buy my book if you want to find that out. <laughs> yeah, he actually told me the same story. And he said, your leaks were pre-flop, post-flop, and... <laughs> <laughs> That's good. <laughs> Uh, very nice, very nice. But yeah, great to see him. Uh, I saw he was up in chips earlier today, and then the uh, World Series of Poker page on the main event refreshed, and he was down below starting stacks. <laughs> so uh, not exactly sure uh, what's going on right now. Doyle down to uh, you see the chip counts updated, uh, just under 33,000. Again, starting with 60,000 in chips. And a. Uh, Again, with two-hour levels, I was talking to a gentleman from uh, Long Island, New York, who had won his tournament entry via a charity tournament out on Long Island. And uh, he says, this is my first main event, and I'm getting crushed. He's, he'd never played anything close to two-hour levels before. Mm -hmm. And if you haven't done that, it is, is a different ball game. Jay. It is. Deep stack poker, and you you can be as patient as you want. Two hour levels is really, really long. Uh, I've had the experience of running a little too fast on day one before. All right, so the ace flops uh, for the pocket kings, no, and I you know what happens. Uh, flush comes. <laughs> <laughs> so the uh, fourth member guaranteed. of That's our group helping us from the floor is <laughs> Jeff Platt. <laughs> Jeff uh, down on the gaming call, floor. Call, call. He yeah, spoke with now, Texas Dolly a just a short time ago. Good to have Jeff with us. Well, Doyle, what has brought you back to the World Series of Poker? Boredom. I, I was... Uh, uh, just sitting at home for the whole year almost, and, and they asked me to come, and uh, I'm glad to come. What's it like to be back? 
it's it's great. I'm uh, having a little bit of hard luck here at the table, but uh, <laughs> but that's kind of be expected. They say you catch all your hands when you're young, anyway. I believe. <laughs> The main is clearly something special. What does this tournament specifically mean to you? Well, it means the beginning of uh, something that Jack and Benny thought up so many years ago. And, you know, I was privileged to be right there with them for the, all the first uh, what, 20 years or so. And uh, it's just uh, it's gratifying to see these big turnouts. So. Um, I'm happy about it. Best of luck. Great to see you as always. Thank you so much for the time. Yes. Doyle's last cash at the World Series came three years ago in the uh, 10K oh. Juice to 7 Low Ball Draw Championship. His son, uh, Todd, a fellow Hall of Famer, actually talked him into playing that tournament. An incredibly Doyle final table that he finished sixth, and Todd Brunson finished tenth. They nearly both made the final table together. Yeah, all those pictures of Doyle's last tournament, you know, and now <laughs> comes they, uh, back. They and, actually yeah. call him the Brett Favre poker. <laughs> so it's great to see uh, Doyle Brunson here, and I, I'm I don't I don't know does he does he thing, go style. online and <laughs> watch <laughs> videos of how they play poker today, or is he just gonna play his game? I don't know. He's, he seems like the kind of guy who wants to stay current. He plays cash, right, a lot. And to his credit, Super System is still a valuable read today. So, you know, as the game has changed a lot, he really was ahead of his time with that book. And I think he has a solid game, whether he, he, kept, like, he catches up with the Sims or not. He's right. still going to be a great poker player. No, absolutely. And, and the instincts uh, never go away. And that's what instincts are. There's his original Super System, which weighs a ton. Sold for $100 a copy, $100. He sold out of it, had to get more of them. Oh. Then he updated to Super System 2 several years ago, which is a little more accessible, but also a thick, thick volume with great chapters on, on all the different games written by different pros. $100. Back in, when did it come out? It came out in the early 80s or yeah, something like I think that? the early 80s. That, I mean, that is... That's just amazing. And he said he regretted writing it because actually, you know, yeah. some people, when they give you tips for handicapping, tips for poker, they actually lie to you because uh, they don't want to make you better. Doyle said he had to change his whole game after he wrote Super System because everyone figured out how he was playing, so he had to adjust what he was doing. Unless he's lying to me about that. <laughs> As mentioned, three featured tables here inside the Amazon room. And Doyle yeah. will uh, continue to hold court there. Jason Kuhn, 72,800 chips. All right, now, again, five levels of play, 10 hours total for people who keep their chips. And uh, Norman, uh, no re entry, which in uh, poker parlance is called. A poker tournament. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Some people call it a freeze out, but we like to call it a poker tournament. Yeah, we'll, we'll talk about reentries in like hour 34. Yeah. <laughs> but yes, this is an old style poker tournament. When you lose all your chips, you are gone from the tournament. But they can register up through the second level of day two if they have not played any of the day one still. So there is that little quirk that you, you can do a little. Rosie Ruiz Jr. <laughs> yes, <a laughs> yes. <little bit. laughs> and you start with 75 big blinds on day two, so it's not like you're starting short stack. Right. How, how do you feel about that, Norm? <laughs> Tournament poker has become a joke. So as far as that goes, <laughs> this, I mean, Jamie talked about on day one, she's like, runs a little too fast. But for her, the main event's really a sprint, not a marathon. For everybody else, it's a marathon. You gotta play many, many, many days, it's difficult. So the fact that you can just not play a single day, a 12 hour day of playing is very hard and very long and very difficult. And just walking on day two should not, should not be the case. It just should not be the case. So because they are starting early, um, gone are the days in the early days uh, when we started doing this where you would see poker being played up till almost 2 in the morning at, at some point. You know, they're starting at 11 a.m. Um, when poker players first started hearing 11 a.m. call time, there was a little bit of an uproar. <laughs> yeah, they'd be like, oh, my God, and I could late reg at 3 p.m. in the morning. Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> exactly.
Yeah, we got, we had a production meeting the other day that was starting at uh, 2 30. Jamie wanted to know there was 2 30 a.m. or p.m. <laughs> she could not make 2 30 p.m. It's too early, but she was fine at 2 30 in the morning. I'm one of the old people now. I'm <laughs> perfectly fine with the morning starts. Oh, okay. Well, that's crazy. Yeah. 1,000. But she still burns it at both ends. I know she, she can stay up late and get up early uh, based on the texts I get from her. <laughs> Are you quoting a cake song? Yeah. You are. <laughs> <laughs> I like to make jokes five people will get. Thank you very much. I'll see Moshe is the uh, chip leader at the table right now. 91-3, which on day one of the main event, again, I'll leave it for you, Norman, means... He always has like a chip leader on day one means nothing. Right? It means, as I believe in one of the first interviews we ever did back in 03, Barry Greenstein was the chip leader at the end of day one. And he said that, you know, that means I'm not going to win this thing. Nobody uh, has. It, I think, right? Nobody yeah. has, and I'll be lucky to cash. Yeah, day one chip leader means absolutely next to nothing. I'd still take it. It's fine. I'm sure you would. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Headlines forever. And because you can still enter if folks here in las vegas want to come down and enter come on down and enter there are plenty of other tournaments going on as well uh, throughout the main event uh and even after the main event i believe there's a 250k of high mm -hmm. roller after the main event as well so a lot of poker to be played still here at the rio as and i alluded to it earlier the, you know the, the swan song for the rio they have announced that the world series poker is moving away from the rio still no announcement on exactly uh, where it will land, but uh, a little sad that, uh, you know, a lot of things that we talk about the Rio and nudge each other about the Rio here and there, but uh, hey, it's the World Series site, you know? Yeah, end of an era. I still get butterflies Five walking into the Rio, eight despite eight never eight having eight done eight anything eight good here at all. <laughs> well, a raise all in with Ace King of Hearts and JJ oh, Lou with Ace. So, Damien LaForge was one who had I'll the Kings a moment ago and <laughs> saw an Ace flop and lost that hand. This is as many Aces this decade. Hi, Sam. Amen. Looking for help in the Ace King Hunter versus Ace. That's, suit, a, that's a tough road to climb, but he's got suited I'll cards. I'll just take a Jackson a hard flop and see what happens. Just give me a Jack to the hard flop, and I'm, uh, you know, take my chances. That's your point. You're your entertainment value. <laughs> yeah. out of the you know, <laughs> that's not a heart. That's the one heart. This is not good. No, it's not. Blue face cards. Hmm. Needs a heart. Well, that'll it's do not. It. Yeah. Play with it. All right. Yeah. You make your 90 minutes. Good game. Good I don't know. I might have made it. With TV timeout. Yeah. Good to play with you. Okay. okay. He's got to get rid of the uh, shirt. Uh, <laughs> he could just cover the un. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's so brutal to be eliminated early day one, but JJ Lou with 148k, nice start for her. And that is a poker player who knows how to hang okay. on to those chips. Huh? Yeah, JJ has made six yeah, World Series final tables. Give away he had somewhere to go. Uh, her best finish was second back in the ladies' event in 03. That was so long ago, the ladies' event that year was half they them and hold them, half oh, seven parts oh, stud. Oh, 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 yeah. oh, your butt, yeah, yeah, yeah. Of she did finish uh, fifth in this year's ladies' event for uh, over 26,000. I had the by Laura Eisenberg, pleasure me. of playing with JJ yeah, uh, day two of the ladies' event, where she made one of the sixest folds I've seen. Um, where I think 99% of people just would have busted. She folded queens just to. It was a cutoff raise, button uh, and a button three bet. She just flatted from the cutoff. Flop comes out eight high all clubs and she just check folds red red queens no problem. Twenty big blinds deep to kings. We just saw Alex <laughs> Livingston. He did that with uh, ten handed right at the main event in 2019. There mm -hmm. it was a huge raise and he had queens and he. He folded the queens. Oh, no I remember problem. that. I yeah. said that is a disrespectful fold. I think it's to Gary Gates, right? Doyle with pocket nines. Mm. JJ giving a little Hollywood. Bring me a good flop. Harry is in a world of hurt. <laughs> 
But he's in a world of his own as well, so he doesn't feel the hurt. Good point. Perry with a Tilt Boy mask. He's one of the original Tilt Boys from back in the day. The I don't know how to describe them. They weren't do-gooders. They were like the merrymakers of poker, yeah. you yeah. know, the uh, combination do-gooders, ne'er-do-wells, pranksters. They dress up as women during ladies' events oh, at geez. San Jose. <laughs> So the old the guard the takes down the old guard. The Sean Deeb of olden times, then? Exactly. Okay. <laughs> Where Sean got all his tricks. Indeed. So Doyle stacks a few new chips, and you get a look at what's going on in the Amazon room. You see the day one entrance uh, the last few years. Well, this, this TBD is going to be pretty low today. Yeah. Uh, we are going to get pretty crowded when we get to days three and four, and then we added two extra flights. You know, it's almost, a, you know, it's, it's quite remarkable. And there's Kelly Minkin. Kelly out there, 50th place in 2018, 29th place in 2015. Big fan of Kelly Minkin. She's really cool. Um, she had her first child this year, so I want to see if it slows her down at all. She's a bit wild in the, in the tournament field. James Woods down a bit from the starting stack. Seen his name on the uh, cash list several times this year. Yeah, he's having a good World Series, and sitting next to that woman, he, I saw him playing a hand where he's sort of mumbling when he bet the turn. Uh, I knew he had nothing when he mumbled when he bet the turn. And they, <laughs> he had an ace in his hand, he hit the ace on the river, and uh, won the hand. You know, actors are going to act. He got lucky. So seat one empty for the moment. Damien LeForbes is gone. He is an ace king of hearts. Into JJ Lou's pocket aces. I mean, ace king of hearts. Yeah. It's a pretty hand, but. It is a pretty hand, and he yeah. was about 60 big blinds deep. Yeah. Can't really fault him for trying to get I'm it in. Gonna, I'm not going to nail the guy. I'm just saying it's day one now. A lot of characters out there already uh, wandering around. A couple costumes, which is nice to see. Catch up with them in the field in a little bit. I saw a Jack in the Box head the other night when I was walking through the Amazon room. <laughs> uh, were you here on the tag team day? Was that? Or it was Halloween. Oh, there were quite a few oh. costumes. In the Bay Area. Oh, okay. Was not here. I'm here now, but I still fly out. Okay. I told them if I busted out in the first uh, first level here, I was going to fly to the game. They're having a game tonight. Oh, okay. Well, hopefully that doesn't happen. <laughs> That's yeah, that I don't that think I'll be able to make that it sound. Now. Talked about the 50K, and uh, they are down to their final five. They played down to five yesterday, and uh, you'll be able to see the final table of the 50K right here on Poker Go tomorrow. At this point, my notes say they're going to start at uh, 1 p.m. Elia Lezra with the chip lead right now. Paul Volpe and Chris Brewer, all of them have over 4.2 million chips right in that area. Uh, Dan, Jungle Man, Cates out there as well, and Ryan Ling making his third final table this year. Those five will be battling for the 50K Poker Player Championship title tomorrow. An action turn card here, if you're following the hand, uh, giving Yemen a open-ended straight draw with the flush draw. But you see Lou making a massive raise with her bottom set that should chase out pretty much anything. JJ knows what's on that board. Wow, he makes the call. It's a, it's a huge pot brewing just for day one. Oh, he's got a lot of chips, too, so he feels he can be a little loose, maybe. <laughs> you gotta be a little bit worried if you're Lou. We see that she's in great shape here, but when you have bottom set and you're getting this many chips in on this board, you have to think, do they have a straight, a higher set already? Didn't you play? 35, yes, 35. sir. So well, really? Wow. You have to leave the 15 in. Floor on the feature. Ah, so he didn't see the raise, that's what I'm thinking, and the rule yeah, is if you're going to you know, call what you That's why, that's why yeah, I want him. That's a great call. Think is one bet. You have to relinquish those chips if you don't want to continue. And we see he's drawing dead, so hopefully for him he doesn't have to put in any more. Wait, wait, wait. He can. He can do call. He can only call or surrender the 15. Okay. We're going to wait for the tape. We're going to wait, okay? 
he just can't yeah, close or leave the fifth Yeah, yeah. I'd rather yeah, get it from someone else. We've been having trouble with the chips. Yes, sir. All right. So we have a, a raise, a call. She raises the 35000 He calls. He has five k out there. He throws two more 5000s out. And then pulls them back. And I wanted you to stay because I was going to make him call or surrender. But then he was trying to go all in, too. So, yeah. Okay. So two more 5 So we got to, yes, that's going to be, you can surrender. But you, the other two 5Ks are going to have to stay in the pot. You can call the bet you, and surrender the additional chips and hold your hand. What are you doing? So you oh, put, you you put two bet. five k's in. Well, he doesn't quite understand it. Yeah, he doesn't speak English. Yeah. Oh, we got to be careful. Yeah. Right? What language and, and, is he and, and, yeah. and he's having trouble with the chips what as well. What language is this? So, the whole time. This isn't just the chips. What language? Okay, so what yeah. you threw in two five k's? Yeah. Okay, so you threw in two five k's like this, right? Okay. You did that? Okay. okay, so you have two options. Okay. Your option, it's been raised to okay. 35,000. So your options are to call 35,000 or fold your hand and relinquish the 15,000 that you threw in. Those are your two options. So fold or call. 35,000 is the bet you're facing. You can call 35 or you can fold your hand. Fold, 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 fold. You fold? Call. 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 Yeah. Call. Yeah. Okay. He's going to call the 35 guys. All right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. Thank you. All right, I'll let the back Mikanoff uh, is going to make this call with the sixes. Well, at least he is all that, in. Yeah, had that option as well. River card, king of hearts. Check. So J.J. Liu is Check. best as Yamin missed everything. Big bet from J.J. Yamin folds. 90. Makanoff oh, makes so his uh, call, uh, and JJ shows a set of eight nine of spade. Look the turn. Eight nine of spade. Up and down. Like I had eight five of diamonds. Uh, boy, they're diamond. just handing JJ yeah, Lou chips eight, today. Eight. What a nice up early down. run for her. Beauty. Howdy. Hey, hey, I wouldn't be surprised if she's oh, yeah. overall hey, chip nice leader of the whole event right yeah. now. Yeah. It's hard I to get a hold of that many chips this early. I feel bad for Makanoff. I. On my uh, the first night of my going, second yeah. honeymoon, I was also given two similar options. Big fan. <laughs> I, made, See you on day one. I made a mistake very similar to what he just made. Should have folded. It really cost me. Are you brand new player? Uh, we play together. When we move to uh, a different venue from the Rio, will you please leave your ex wife Jones behind? Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. Listen, sweetie. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I've been running this joint for a while, <laughs> so when we go to the new place, then maybe your rules will, will definitely uh, <laughs> will hold over. Oh, yeah. Tough ending yeah. for uh, Max. 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 Nice to meet you. Is that in my lifetime? 11.8% flopping a set during my lifetime? I'm still waiting. Makes me feel way better than happens. JJ Liu got a uh, master's in computer science uh, after moving to the United Has States. Extra, if you guys need hats. Oh, yeah. From Taiwan. Yeah. And she moved to the Silicon Valley and, and worked out there, Palo Alto area. And uh, now she's a Silla Poker Pro and, and hotelier. You like it. Actually, the three pros here from different generations are sort of old school. They all actually have <laughs> educations. You know, Doyle. Yeah, that's actually. Very Not that true. Jamie does it, but you know Jamie does too, and she was a, a lawyer yeah, for or whatever for a couple of levels. Uh, but anyway, Doyle's got an education degree, and, and uh, you just mentioned JJ Liu, and, and Perry, Perry Friedman's definitely overeducated. He's got a, a Stanford boy, right? Stanford boy, and he just went back and got a law degree like five years ago. So he's got a bachelor's, he's got a master's, and now he's got a law degree. That just means he's got nothing else to do, basically, when you start put piling up. And JJ hasn't had to do that much work, really, you know, so far. I mean, it, obviously she knows what to do with chips, and, and that's a, a very dangerous thing if you're playing against her. And she's not someone who's just going to spew. Yeah. 
I Don't like her exactly style, though, just yeah. uh, huh? putting so much pressure on people. That raise is huge. It's from 4,500 to 35K, I believe, and that's just a, a massive pot to, to brew on day one. Next time cocktails it, come back, could I get it's a It's a nightmare for the other players, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, Sugar-free. And then you got Doyle there as well. Um, even if he doesn't have chips, he is dangerous. The Poker Go Tour, presented by Guaranteed Rate, is the ultimate battleground for the game's elite. Watch as poker's best players compete in the most challenging high-stakes events in the world, exclusively, of course, on the Poker Go. Jason Kuhn is on the left in the field Stand today, up. as we mentioned, at one of the feature name? tables. Nicoma. 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 The story early on yeah, is J.J. Lou sitting game. on over 240,000 chips. That is 4x the starting stack. And with Ace King. Raised 1400. She's not someone who's, uh, as you mentioned, going to just shy away. She knows what to do with them. I mean, if she's got to lock them down, you know, she'll, she can afford to lock oh. them down. But she's, she's going to. I don't think I've ever seen JJ lock Make down. the chips work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but again, she understands what day one of the main event is. And for her right now, it is a huge opportunity to build that stack. Going against some low ball cards. Ace King whipping the flop, but not slowing down, even against two opponents. And what can these hands do? You know, a, a bottom pair here. for Kareem. And Five four just does get out of the way. There you go. <laughs> yeah, it can't be this easy. She, you see her chuckling. <laughs> I think she's a little not embarrassed, but she's like, <laughs> how could this be happening? To me? God bless her. <laughs> Doyle does oh. rule. There you go. Hello. Ten World Series of Poker bracelets, and we've talked a lot, a lot about him. Uh, his story is long, oft told, and remarkable. Yeah, his last bracelet actually came in uh, 05, 16 years ago. Uh, same year that Johnny Chan won his tenth bracelet, and they were temporarily on top of the bracelet world. Phil Helmuth then won his tenth to tie them, and now Helmuth is at 16. Johnny Chan, Doyle Brunson, and Phil Ivey all mm -hmm. at 10. Yeah, we were uh, we had the honor of calling Doyle's tenth bracelet uh, that year, and uh, Ming, Ming Lee finished second, I think. To, to yeah, him. his buddy. Mm -hmm. mm. Lane Flack was at that final table too. It's day one for the announcers too, as you see the new man in seat one, <laughs> mm. <laughs> Jamie. Uh, uh, welcome to the booth. <laughs> and uh, you I'm, know what? I'm just step out for a second. I'll this one name. I feel like it's a little bit. mostly a norm job. A little bit for good luck. You know, you're talking about Tave Palerian? <laughs> yep, that's what we're talking about. Oh. Well, he's, I guess he's just sat down because he's got the starting stack. But yeah, talking about Doyle. Um, and you look at his World Series results and it gives you an idea of what he has meant to the World Series and to the game. 18 of his first 19 caches, he finished fifth or better with eight bracelets in that stretch. And that's how we, you know, he has built the bedrock of who Doyle Brunson is. And uh, with it came fame and fortune for the World Series. And uh, he and all the other guys, Amarillo Slim, uh, were great billboards for this event. But let me just just to clarify those numbers you gave. Uh, again, those fields were very small. Absolutely. So I mean, for instance, his two world championships were against fields of 22 and 34. Uh, I mean, Jamie. They were building it. Jamie Absolutely. meets more than those on Tinder, Grinder, whatever, <laughs> in the <laughs> course of a day. So these were just very small starting fields back then. Oh. But he did, he was instrumental in building the World oh, Series. Oh, without question. Yeah. Uh, like you said, he is the Mount Rushmore. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you want to disparage someone for winning 20-person fields, you have to remember that you've not even won a sit and go, Norm. No, that's correct. <laughs> uh, <laughs> speaking of that, uh, you, know, you make me think I didn't get the pleasure of calling the, the ladies' uh, final table this year. I know you, do, you all did with uh, Jen, Jen Kelly. Mm -hmm. yeah. You saw J.J. Liu finish what would she finish fifth, fifth. in that one mm -hmm. yeah i feel responsible because i talked to jamie a couple days earlier and she just wasn't having a real good world series and i said you know the mixed fields probably are not for you so <laughs> why don't you try 
to just do the ladies' field, and bang, I think you cashed. I did cash. Yeah. So it was I, everything I, I thought it would be. <laughs> Much of the playing field you get a look at right now in the Amazon room. Very familiar look to longtime poker fans with world champions hung on the wall there. You see P.S. Hines, Jonathan Duhamel all around. Uh, it is a shrine to poker itself. Glad you're with us. I'm Lon McCarran with Norman Chad, Jamie Kerstetter, and uh, we've got Jeff Platt down on the gaming floor bringing us some reports from time to time, trying to give you a feel of really what this is all about. And day one is a very interesting day on a lot of fronts, and particularly now for J.J. Liu, who has so many chips right now to play with. There are a lot of different uh, philosophies on which day Plus one to play. Right. So, Jamie, this we have six flights. Mm -hmm. What was your thinking on picking your, your day one? Um, my thinking was I picked the one that I could do and broadcast still. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Yes. That changes. Okay, Poker Go let me know what day one okay. I would be playing. But actually, coincidentally, is the one I would have picked anyway. Uh, it's Sunday, day one D. Um, European players tend to be stronger these days than Americans. They'll be here one E and F. They'll combine with, uh, I believe, one C to play day two. So I'm trying to avoid playing with people who are way better than me and only playing with people who are somewhat better than me instead. So this is just a blanket thought you have yes. of people who play with an accent. I said, I sit down and hear seven accents, sure. I want to unregister. Sure. So, folks out there, if you find Jamie at your table, sure. just <laughs> fake an accent. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know, it's, it's not really our fault in America. We have a, a limited amount of online poker to play, and uh, Europeans have been playing online at very tough fields for the last what, 10 years without us, so they've gotten a lot better, in my opinion. And a lot of people do ask me the question about how oh. does online translate to live? Um, and it goes much better for you going online to live than live yes, to online. Yes, I agree with that. Yeah. yeah, you get more yeah. reps and you see a lot more hands and you, you, know, you learn from your mistake mistakes a lot more quickly. What did you show? Mm -hmm. The flush. Flush and the win. It's the full basis. So, yeah, mm -hmm. uh, it's uh, just know, to get yeah, the, the reps, right? Yeah. It's yeah. like in any <laughs> athletic endeavor. I need the club, uh, no the, the more board, you do it, the more you practice it, the better you get, the more confident you get. Tom McAvoy in the field today, Poker Hall of Famer, main event champ from 1983. Those four bracelets to his credit. And here's one of his claims of fame. The first satellite winner to make it to the main event title. He won one of the original satellites that they would do, and he made it all the way. Adrian Mateos, three-time bracelet winner, number one on Spain's hit list, going here on 1A. Terrific player. I just love everything about his game and how he holds himself. And, yeah, tight quarters out there, and it's just going to get tighter. <laughs> Captain Jack Sparrow in the house. <laughs> <laughs> I love this tagline. <laughs> <laughs> that is actually Scott or Clark uh, in the outfit. He, he appears to have three cell phones. No, no, just two. That's that might be a uh, a little fan. And that and he's got the sword also, uh, which is pretty impressive. I'm not sure how he got it. Ooh through <laughs> everyone to bring it into the room. Uh, but uh, he is fully decked out. Uh, so thank you, uh, Scott or Clark, for bringing your A game here to day 1A. A king for both JJ and Perry. Oh. To get back to this uh, powerful feature table and and just uh, lucked out the story of the day so far. JJ Lou building that sure. huge stack. The job of the turf that you do the front yard. Oh, the Friedman customer want to take out there. Three. It was headed for a chop. Please, and tell the guys to take out the up. To listen what the customer wants. And you can hear everyone mic'd up. So uh, get a little uh, conversation from the rail. AJ value betting her king, possibly targeting a, a jack or a ten. It's a little ambitious. 
I would think. I think you're going to get a lot of folds out, out of worse cards than yours, but I think you're making two pair here. He's going to make the call. Call. JJ turns over her weaker king, and Perry will take it. The king's up. And yeah, he was sitting on the edge of his chair for a second. He felt a little better when the nine hit. Mm -hmm. Man, how many people busted from this table? Look at these stats. Exactly. Reed That's what I was 171. Just yeah. Kareem with 106. JJ down a little bit now. 233. Yeah. They might have busted four players from this table already. <laughs> kind of tie Perry Friedman got together with uh, there, my bad. Andy Block and Phil Gordon Louisiana in those Tech, days, Tilt Boys. You got this game? Yeah. Okay. Did it just start? Yeah. All right. Well, Doyle just looks like he's having a good time. He does. He really does. Uh, right. And he, his whole demeanor and, and countenance changes when he does smile. He's such a huge smile. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's amazing to watch. Please hold. Please hold. Okay. It's just an amazing accomplishment at that age to be starting a tournament that could last seven or eight days. If he and runs well, this oh, is a big, that's big been endeavor. That's concern. Absolutely. JJ just calling and Doyle comes along too. We play you. Ooh, two spades for Doyle. And Doyle last cash of the main event at age 80. Check. Uh, 2013. Check. Finished 409th. 4100. Yeah, mean following up with his original raise that he's going to be met with a flush draw and top pair. Top pair coming along. Nut flush draw for Doyle. Oh. Oops. JJ still best. Eight's now picking up a gutter ball. Let's see if he wants to continue with this ruse. Do I have a pair to go with his nut flush draw? Somewhat short stack though. Sixteen thousand. No, I was gonna wow. bet on the come. I mean, can't feel good about his eights anymore. <laughs> I think we're just to uh, Hollywood in a little before hitting the muck. And FYI, masks do not cover up your tells, okay? <laughs> it's like a little nervous under there, but reaching for chips? Wow. Really? I mean, uh, it doesn't put anybody on an ace, if, I guess, if he's coming along, but maybe it is just a little. Wow, I'm really surprised at this call. You got to look at Brunson's stack and know that he's not folding this hand. Um, very, very unlikely to fold this hand at any point. Got rid See of here, JJ. maybe a brick on the river, but oh, no. Doyle hits his flush on the end. Also giving eights a straight. This is an amazing card for Doyle. He should get that last 13k paid off. Fifty-two in the middle. So I wonder how much of this can I get him to pay off? As Jamie mentioned, hit it straight with that third spade on board. 13 and 8. All in. And all a call. In. There's the straight. There's the flush. Doyle with the double up. Let's go. Doyle Brunson, over 80,000. Doyle looks like he's been here before. Kick us off the Hey, and, and every deck of 52 cards, there are 2,598,960 possible five-card poker hands. At this point, how many of those do you think Doyle Brunson <laughs> has seen? He's seen them all four times, I'm sure. That's, that's remarkable. 
Nice hand, Doyle. Nice nice Boy, what a great sight to see Doyle scooping in yeah. a double up. Momentarily. And more than a double up because there's JJ three way was on the hand, yeah. Mm -hmm. So 80,100 for Doyle Brunson from his 60K starting stack down yep. to 32. <laughs> now up to 80. Uh, Jamin, uh, if he's a poker fan, he's a, any type of poker historian, a uh, little mixed feelings maybe, you know. <laughs> I want to keep Doyle around, but, I, you know. I don't know about that. I don't feel like the feelings are very All right, mixed. I, I, hate, I hate losing chips. for the storyline, okay, <laughs> <anyone>. Kerstetter? <laughs> <laughs> Doyle Brunson, love to see that spade on the end. Which mall fun? David Lawless, two red aces. I feel like it's always been a lie when someone's like, I don't mm -hmm. mind losing my chips to you. Mm -hmm. Like, eh. I don't believe that. <laughs> please hold, please hold. <laughs> Only 1,500 <laughs> with a suited 8-5 for JJ. Cool. She's just always in the mix. I think she's going to bag 500K. What do you think? Absolutely. 500K? Yeah. Wow. That would be cool. So I was laughing at you. You said, you know, sometimes she just locks it down. I'm like, mm, <laughs> yeah. I don't think so. Yeah. <laughs> All right, day one main event, aces versus eight, five suited. Doyle Brunson took a while to stack those chips and, and not just because Doyle's 80, <laughs> that's, that's a lot of chips. What a flop. Couple He's of clubs out there. Red color. No con the door, as the customer. And the eight for JJ Liu, but still an uphill climb, even though it's 50-50. 4,200. Lois over bets the pot on this draw heavy board. Oh. Never change any anything, huh? No, we that is correct. Ninety nine per nine percent of the time. Yeah. David Lawless trying to get JJ out of the hand. Over bets pot and then about 90% pot on the turns. This cool. is growing very quickly and she's not yeah. going anywhere. Yeah. A river card. Still kind of chilly on this end of the table. Swing and a miss for JJ Liu. Over here, like, it's like my tiny bed. Yeah. You get a direct light. I, oh, I didn't think it was going to bet. With her two wow, calls. Huge bet on the river, too. Almost pot again. Green chip worth 25K and the orange chip, which will be here until they turn out the lights, 5K. <laughs> there are a lot of draws that miss. However, you're holding two clubs in your hand, so it makes it a lot less attractive to try to call. She's got the pair of eights. Third pair. Not blocking any of the straight draws that miss, but nice with a full pot bet on the river, you're not trying to hero this one. Nice fold from JJ Lou. All right, so uh, Lawless gets uh, his aces to bring him some new chips. Let's send it on down to the gaming floor. Once again, Jeff Platt with a little on the defending champ. It is a tradition for the defending champion to announce shuffle up and deal to kick things off at the World Series of Poker main event. This year, the honors went to Damian Salas out of Argentina. Salas won the abbreviated 2020 main event, which was a combination of online and live play. Here on day 1A, ready to defend his title, and then he gets involved in a pot against Austin Thomas. It was top two pair for Thomas. It was the nut flush for Salas. They get all the chips in on the turn, and we can't show you Damian Salas for a reason because the river gave Thomas the full house and Salas was eliminated shortly thereafter. So we will not have a back-to-back -back champion this year. Lon? They come and they go. Well, they went quickly oh. that time. Mm -hmm. So Johnny Chan is uh, safe as the last back-to-back -back champion. 88, 87, and 88. 
call. And this far, this far from changing our whole world, <laughs> winning that third in a row. Oh, but still, help you. Finally got eight. <laughs> JJ Lou, he's queen of My gloves. Four way action. Four players. Big Check. nine deuce, a couple of hearts. The Check. pocket five still ahead for Kareem. Pocket fives, Doyle 2900. gives up his almost 10 okay. deuce. <laughs> Is the 10 tray called the almost 10 deuce? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, if you're playing it with your Doyle, uh, yeah. I mean, usually the hand that games are shorter. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we, well, 10 3 offsuit is called Kitchens. No one has ever explained to me why, but that's what the online guys are calling I've it back in 2009. Cool. Kitchens. Kitchens, yep. Kitchen. Oh, yeah, yeah, no yeah, explanation, yeah. never will be one. Mm. I had to be reminded what the computer hand was the other day. Queen seven, right? Queen seven, yeah, yeah. yeah exact middle the of the all the rank of hand yeah. rankings. Yeah. All the lineup over there. And yeah. Table B, where Jason Kuhn is seated. Jason, 71,008. There was a guy at a final table and he had I'll see a guy that was kind still of like standing chip leader there out there with just over 81,000. And then they had hand signals for to tell him what the wow. other people had. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Really? Bro, I had a tournament. Um, I was in Deauville in France and I was playing a live tournament and a team of like hackers broke into my hotel room and installed a virus on my computer to see my cards. And then they played me on the internet and beat me out of a bunch of money. Three thousand oh, eight hundred. Oh Sorry, that's three thousand. Yeah. Tell my friend he's insane. Sure yeah, that's wow. an insane story. Bro, it's crazy. Wow. Jack, you, a dealer the other day was saying that there's some people around here with some artificial intelligence that'll do your facial expressions, and they're on the rails, and then give it to their friends at the table. Huh. Right. So what is that guy? I don't. I mean, just, they said they had artificial intelligence can look at your face and do your reactions and stuff like that, like the best reads ever in poker. Huh. Oh. That theory the seems the to day, they put a come here. with a yeah. cue attached yeah. to it. <laughs> Listen, I'm just going to go with the story that someone hacked my computer 20 years ago, and that's why I haven't won since. <laughs> the fact you're playing with the same computer from 20 years ago tells us a lot. It's an Apple IIe, okay? It weighs 47 That was a good one. That was a good one. <laughs> I was actually blind to it at the moment. I kept playing him. And my friend, who was like one of the best players in the world, he kind of like, hey, stop playing. And then we looked at the statistics. And the poker site looked at the guy's win rate against other players, and he was just smashing everyone. And it was like, yes. he had hacked three or four other players and yeah. playing them all. Right, and now it's, 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 it's yeah. it was at 88, now it's at what, 44? And there's video of the government doing it, too. Well, Jason reminded me why I love bowling. This type of stuff never happens in bowling. <laughs> Even in Wii bowling, you never have any viruses or Nobody pour hacking. glue in the finger holes of your bowling ball. That's, that's the most you can do. <laughs> yeah. But, you know. Yeah. These are more normal stacks. This is what I think for day one. Some this people have won a few pots, lost a few pots, but man, that feature table's nuts. And everybody but two are with a starting stack, or three, okay, so that makes sense, okay. Mm -hmm. Everybody just trying to find their way here. They've played two and a half levels so far. As I mentioned, if uh, you haven't played two hour levels, you, you might just want to oh. sit around a little while and figure it out. <laughs> It does change your game, changes everything, and then you'll love it. <laughs> Feels more like a cash game. You, mm -hmm. you get to chill on the same blind level for so long. You really don't have to force the action too much. Cool. And there are fans in the house, as we saw on our wide shots. Um, 
I was asking around if there were any limitations. I, I, I don't think they've had to install really any uh, limitations on, on the folks here. And things are constantly changing here in Clark County, Nevada on masks. And you know, one of the Ford records said, I th we don't have to have our masks on after today, right? And I said, I think that's not true. Mm. <laughs> uh, Clark County is, is constantly reevaluating things. Uh, and the rule uh, here is you have to be vaccinated to play. Mm -hmm. You don't have to have your mask so. on at the table because of a special dispensation of it being a convention over 4,000 people, and that's what Nevada uh, current law uh, states, as it were. And um, But when you're walking up, walking around the Rio, you have to have your mask on. Did they make a ruling on drinking out of booths on the mothership in the age of COVID? Not that I've heard. They haven't <laughs> outlawed that, at least. We haven't had a really raucous rail this whole... WSP no, uh, we, uh, they tried, they tried uh, once or twice. <laughs> Speaking of Maria Ho, um, <laughs> she had uh, a tough World Series until she actually uh, worked with me on one of the bracelet shows. And then you taught her everything thing, she knows. Uh, we know that she's at a final table of 3K horse. OK, let's follow that logical strand again. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying I, ta I didn't teach her anything. But you may touch me if you want. <laughs> Thank you very much, Jamie. <laughs> you were quick for something. <laughs> that, was a, that was a desperation move. Oh, yeah, for sure. Oh. Okay. So you take four chips. You take four chips. You put two fingers up here. And then you take your pinky. And then your ring finger. And you put them on the right side. So they're kind of squeezing together. Yeah. And then lift them with your middle finger. Many main events planned also uh, in the pavilion. And a future note for y'all out there, uh, it is one of the best values on the schedule. A thousand to enter, and it kind of mimics the main event, albeit they have 30 minute levels. But day two is underway, and they should finish tomorrow. Yeah, and I, I mean, Jamie and I disagree on a lot, and I, again, thought with some of the trials and tribulations she's having, you know, at the big show, that, you know, she, she, for a long time, she was a very good circuit grinder. And now, since stepping up to the majors, she's had some more problems. So the mini main event, I think, is a good, uh, you know, a, a good stepping stone to take, and I'm surprised you didn't play the mini main event. I would have had to miss this with you guys, and you know, you're oh. so kind to me, I wouldn't miss this for the world. You know, the thing about the mini main event, Jamie, is that, you know, it's, it's for people whose skill set is less, is, you know, less nuanced than the big people, you, you get to play in the sandbox with people of generally your same skill set. So I think, it, again, it's a great stepping stone to the main event. Mm -hmm. So the mini main, and I didn't want to miss you in the booth, but I just thought the mini main might have been a, a nice idea. <laughs> He's used to it. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> brutal. Mm -hmm. How sticky does Moshe want to get with these fives? You were waiting to fall asleep last night. You were finally the perfect the table. Did you ever think there would be two YouTubers that started playing poker two weeks ago at your table yeah, on the first day of the main event? Uh, <laughs> you couldn't even write that, could you? If you wanted two YouTubers. Enough, I wonder who he's referencing. Uh, you couldn't even write that, could you? <laughs> I've been in better situations, believe it or not. There you see, we're coming off uh, in 2019, the second largest ever field in the main event. 85-69. Of course, the Jimmy Goldier was number one. There's some talk about that going by the wayside. Is there a wedding going on here? Nah. The Amazon room is pretty romantic. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> so six starting days, most ever that they have had at the main event. It's been interesting to see what kind of effect the lifting of the travel ban has for the international players who can come directly to the U.S. instead of putting up homes in Mexico and Canada before they come here. Where would you have gone, Norman? Do you go to Canada or Mexico if you, if you were of that ilk and wanted to come here and were willing to put in the time to quarantine? Do you go north or south? Well, I would have gone north. Yeah. Really? Oh, Montreal. You go to Montreal. Yeah, I'd go to you? Montreal yeah. in a heartbeat. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I'd also go to Toronto. Please hold. Please hold. 
No, we got some great news from one of his friends, Theo Hall, on Twitter, who says they refer to him as Tave. Mercifully, Ta he allows people to call him Tave. Tave. Yeah. Yep. Oh, okay. that's, that's right up your alley. <laughs> Max Tave. Okay, we'll take that. All right. Oh, by the way, the last name's only 14, 15 oh, letters, so I, I can't believe you couldn't master it. Uh, you did. Oh. You did. I was just going to go with what you said. We'll go with Tave. Okay. It's making it hard for me to fold. Let me see if I got anything. Okay. Hmm. Cha Win is a new player in C8. Three zero. Can you, can you see it from there, Doa? Yeah. It's three zero. What's the line? Twelve. Twelve? Hmm. What's the line on? Did you hear? It's Twelve, though, Norman. You want to take?